So let's move on to some more gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Um, the next one I want to mention is one of my favorite colors. I've had this in my palette, I think since I started watercoloring. It's just a really, really beautiful kind of purplish violet, very, very vibrant violet color, um, which I hope you can kind of see on the screen. So it's just really hard to um, get the colors perfectly right. It looks like this and it's just a gorgeous color. I have it in my palette here all the time and yeah, I love it. I usually mix it with uh, a color that I will mention soon if I want it not so so dark and intense the the swatch here is quite light this color can get very very intense so something similar to this <laughs> that also gets very intense are these shades um they're not identical but um you know they're pretty close so the first one is the shinhan pass red violet this is super super intense and a very unique color um if you know you like these type of like red violets and you want something super super bright again i'm yeah this is has um kind of a low light fastness rating so take that into consideration um but it's so intense i love this color and I don't currently have it in my palette because I have the Schminke one, which, you know, if you build it up or if you use it like very intensely, it's kind of close. But yeah, love this color. Very unique. I haven't found a lot that are comparable and that are as intense. And something uh, similar, it's a little bit more bluish, more purplish, is the White Knight's Violet Rose. Um, I just have to say... You know, the White Knights, the most, um, they are becoming more and more widely available. That's my White Knights palette. Um, they are mostly like the ones that I find in my local stores are mostly either sets that, you know, you can't choose the colors or if you like want to buy them open stock, it's usually um, full pens. I haven't seen half pens. I don't know if they make half pens. I know they make tubes, but I haven't like been able to find those in where I usually shop so it's a very interesting color very beautiful but it's a little bit harder to get and um, yeah the full pan you know it just takes a lot of space and this is not the type of color that I need a full pan in my palette I don't have like all my pans are half pans and that's quite enough for me but I just wanted to mention it my <laughs> my hunt for the perfect violet color was a hard one. And basically, my I really wanted to get something like the Daniel Smith Cobalt Violet. I just love this color. I wanted this, yeah, this violet color that was more on the reddish side as opposed to the more bluish ones, like the Ultramarine Red. I wanted that pinkish violet. And the Daniel Smith one, as I said, it's just, I don't think it's a good uh, paint to use, you know, to re-wet when it's dry. So I looked online, you know, and I did some research and I was looking at different websites. And the first one I think that I got um, after the disappointing Daniel Smith one was, um, and the Daniel Smith, again, just to be clear, if you use it wet from the tube, I think it's a beautiful color. I don't use watercolors straight from the tube so for me it just doesn't work um so the one that i went for the first one was the uh daller Rowney cobalt magenta this is how it looks and you can see that this is insanely a granulating color um i think these are beautiful when you mix them with other colors and or if you like me if you paint like very freely and the colors flow into each other the granulation here is amazing but for me i found that you know 
besides the granulation the color like the the base color just wasn't strong enough so i continued to search and the one i found and the one i stuck with that i absolutely love is the Windsor and Newton Cobalt Violet. Looks like this. I'm not a huge fan of this, the newer Windsor and Newton packs. You can't really see the color at all. And the swatch is this. So I don't know if you can see this. So first of all, this is a bit, it's very similar. They're very similar to each other, but um, you know, the Windsor Newton is probably just a little bit more pinkish. And you can see that just the, you get a, a better color payoff, I feel. It's probably not as granulating, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. It re-wets really beautifully, which I think is the problem with these cobalt violets. And I usually mix it when I use it. I usually mix it with a little bit of the Schmincke Red Violet. I have them here right next to each other. Um, just to get it to be a bit more bright and get the Schmincke one a little less intense. Um, I love this color and this was like one of the, for me, like the holy grail colors that I just, I really wanted that shade in my palette. I didn't want to try and mix something like this and I also wanted this beautiful granulation. So I love this one and I think with, you know, Windsor & Newton, they're super widely available and you can get them half pans full pans small tubes large tubes so lots of uh, good variety there now if you're looking for something similar to that but more um, bluish i would say i guess quite similar to the ultramarine red then holbein has this beautiful color um, cobalt violet light and this is a single pigment color, looks like this. And yeah, it's just a more bluish tone, I would say, than, you know, the, the Windsor and Newton one. Another uh, beautiful shade that um, some companies have something similar to this, but I think this one is the most vibrant and I absolutely love it. So this one is the Schmincke Brilliant Blue Violet, and it is exactly that. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous um, color, which I absolutely love. I have it in my palette. I probably don't use it as much as I use all the pinks and violets, but it is beautiful. So that's how it looks. And that's the big tube, again, with Schmincke, just like Windsor & Newton. You can find them in half pans, full pans, small tubes, large tubes. So, you know, lots of option. Um, this is a large 15 millimeter, milliliter tubes, millimeters, milliliter tubes, probably will last me a lifetime. So, yeah. Um, moving on to indigo. Now, indigo is a color that every brand has, but... My favorite one from all the ones that I've tried is the Schmincke one. And it is actually an interesting uh, combination of two blue pigments. So most, I think almost all the other ones that I've tried have black in them. And I just find the Schmincke one is just, you know, more like inky, blue, clear, um, not, you know, muddy, not just a beautiful, beautiful indigo. So if you're on the hunt for a good indigo color, check out the Schmincke one. As I said, you can buy the half pan if you don't want to commit to a large tube and try it. It's gorgeous. So let's move on to some turquoises. I'm going to try and keep these uh, to the really unique ones because there are a ton. Every company has beautiful turquoises. Um, you know, Daniel Smith has like the, I think the known ones are the Thalo turquoise and the, um, what's it called? The ultramarine turquoise, both beautiful. However, they are both um, a mix of two pigments, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I, I found this one from Schmincke, which I use all the time. And I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful turquoise. So this is called uh, Helio 
turquoise by Schmincke. It's more of a like a reddish or bluish <laughs> turquoise, bluish turquoise, as opposed to the really green ones like the ultramarine. This is the phthalo turquoise, super, super intense. And then this one is the Schmincke Helio turquoise. So you can see it looks like blue next to the um, the Daniel Smith one. They're both gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Daniel Smith Amazonite Genuine. It's just a beautiful, I don't know, minty, greenish turquoise type of color. Really, really beautiful. I love that color. And then when I want to go really into minty colors, so there's the Fuchsite Genuine from Daniel Smith. This is this one. Um, they look a little bit different on screen. And it's nice. I have it also in a half pan, but I would say I prefer the Sennelier Emerald Green, which looks like this. And you can also buy this in a half pan. So this is how it looks. And this is just, as you can see, it's such a beautiful color. It's transparent, even though it looks, I mean, when you look at it in the pan, it's this one here, you know, it looks like opaque. It looks like a pastel color almost, but no, it's transparent. It's beautiful. The Sennelier paints, what I love about them, I don't know, they have that je ne sais quoi type of thing, maybe because they're French, but sorry about my horrible French accent, but um, they re-wet beautifully. They have honey in them, make them really kind of sticky. Also, when they dry, they're not as dry as like the Daniel Smith one. Um, they're kind of more sticky. They re-wet re -wet beautifully. And um, yeah, I just love this color, emerald green. It's like the perfect mint color. It's, I love this color. It's perfect. <laughs> Did I say that it's perfect? It's perfect. So, and another one that I want to mention is if you're looking for a dupe, a more affordable option, because you can get it also in a half pan. I'm not sure if the tube, I think also the tube is cheaper than the um, real thing. I'm talking about the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine from Daniel Smith. I'm just pointing at it. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. It's this one here. Um, it's a beautiful, more kind of muted turquoise color. It is gorgeous. I think it's one of the prettiest colors in the Daniel Smith range. Um, but a tube of this thing, I think in Europe costs almost like 30 euros. And I think in America, like also 20, like high in the 20s dollars for a tube. And I am happy to say that I have found a Schmincke color that is almost identical. And with Schmincke, you can buy the half pans. The one from Schmincke that is almost identical is called Cobalt Green Turquoise. Not to be confused, it's number 510. Not to be confused with cobalt turquoise, which is kind of like the, um, you know, the cobalt teal that pretty much any company has. Um, cobalt teal blue by Daniel Smith and every other company has that. And Schmike also has their version, which is called cobalt turquoise. But the one I'm talking about, the one that is a dupe, I would say, for the Sleeping Beauty turquoise from... Daniel Smith is the cobalt green turquoise. So if you're interested in that color, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I use it, um, yeah, quite a lot. I have my two, this is the cobalt turquoise here and next to it is the cobalt green turquoise. Um, with the cobalt uh, turquoise or teal blue, whatever you want to call them, I found that I like that shade. The pigment is PG50 pretty much in every brand that I've tried. Core makes a beautiful one, Daniel Smith, Sennelier, uh, M. Graham, every company like that I've tried from those top companies. It's a beautiful color. Some are a tad more greenish, some are a tad more bluish, all beautiful. Um, but yeah, but this one, the cobalt green turquoise from Sennelier, from Schmincke is 
just a beautiful beautiful color and I love it and I think it is a, a quite a unique color like those two the Daniel Smith one and the Schmincke version I think they are quite unique so I use these kind of two colors all the time but um, the Naples yellow I love the Schmincke one I think it's like really buttery and pretty but there are like similar shades you know Naples yellow every brand has a Naples yellow and it's a really like lovely, soft, buttery type of uh, yellow. And I don't think, I love the Schmincke one, but I don't think it's like particularly unique. But Schmincke does have another color, which is called Naples Yellow Reddish. And you can see it here next to the, to the yellow one. I'm sorry, the, the light is a bit difficult. So you can see this is just more reddish and this is great for like skin tones. Um, I do paint uh, portraits and or like figures or faces or something like that. And but I just love this color, you know, even for painting every other thing. Uh, it's just really, really beautiful. And I use both of them a lot. Um, it's a really pretty color. It is opaque and it's a mixture of four pigments, two whites and like a red and a yellow, but it's beautiful. I really like it. So if you're on the market for something similar, then check out this color. And another two really interesting colors that I want to mention, I think these are really, really, really convenient colors if you're, you know, just looking for that particular shade, but I thought they were worth a mention. Sennelier. Sennelier has some, I don't know, they're kind of, even when I look through the other colors, if I'm, even if I have something similar or almost identical from other companies, the Sennelier paints are, somehow their shades are just right, beautiful, love them. So these two neutrals are interesting and I don't think they're very common to find. Uh, they are all mixtures, as I said, of several pigments with white and black, so kind of muddy colors but I like them and that's one of them is this one is the Sennelier gray which you can see it almost has like a greenish tint to it but like a very very muted greenish gray and yeah opaque muddy light but I don't know I think they're like really interesting and fun to play with and then this one is kind of similar to I guess it's very similar to uh, buff titanium and I have the Daniel Smith one, which I use a lot, but this one is a little bit more like warmer and that's the Sennelier Warm Gray. So this one, and it's just, I don't know if you're looking for like these really buttery, light, muddy, neutral colors. Um, I think these are fun for, you know, urban um, sketching. And just because, you know, that's the type of color I feel it, do you see? Or also, if you do just like landscapes, you get a lot of those muddy, sandy colors. I really like these. I like the Buff Titanium, but I think every company has um, a version of that, you know, like this classic Buff Titanium color, Titan Buff or whatever you want to call it. But I think the Sennelier one is just, I don't know, it's just a really pretty shade. I can't tell you that it's like, you know, super amazing. I just find the color very pretty. So I wanted to share this with you. Whew. That was a long video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find this, you know, helpful, maybe gave you some ideas on new pretty paints you can add to your collection. Please leave me a comment below if you have like your own recommendations on unique colors and also so the other viewers can use that information. And you know, I hope that you will make those like really unique colors because the other standard colors, while beautiful, you know, like ultramarine blue or cobalt blue or I don't know, alizarin crimson or all those classic colors or Indian yellow even, I love Indian yellow, but I feel like with the good brands, they're all really good. And it's finding those unique shades that you can add to your palette that to me, I find color really inspiring. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please subscribe if you want to 
see more of my videos and hit the notification bell because YouTube just does all kinds of weird stuff and it unsubscribes you and it doesn't show you my videos and all kinds of weird things. So make sure that you hit the little bell and then you will get notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching. Bye.